Hello, welcome back to Lamaster Tech, and today's video is going to be episode one in getting started with C++ programming. So for our introduction series to C++, we are going to use the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE. Um, it's really powerful, it's really easy to use, and it's totally free to download for personal use. So the steps for installing it are actually going to be the exact same as the steps were for installing it for C Sharp, which I already made a video on where I went into more detail about where to get it. So I'll leave a card to that video somewhere in the top of your screen right now if you need help installing Visual Studio. But I'm gonna assume you've got through the Visual Studio install and so we can go ahead and get started with actually programming. So when you boot up Visual Studio, you get this splash screen and um, what you'll want to do to start is just create a new project hopefully it looks like this and it'll right away it'll give you the languages it has that you can program in um, and so obviously we want to do C++ since we're doing a C++ now you could do a console app um, this is okay to start with I'm gonna start with empty project just so that I can make it uh, kind of clear um, you know where everything comes from so for this one we'll just call this project C++ um, getting started like that and hit create and it's going to do some um, logic behind the magic behind the scenes to basically set up the framework of a project for you that's why I like Visual Studio um, I know a really simple one if you don't have the computer space for Visual Studio a lot of people uh, have luck with code blocks that's a really simple IDE for C++ and I think it works for C Sharp as well you can check that one out if Visual Studio is too big, too much of a headache. But anyways, once you have uh, loaded in a new project and you get to kind of this window where obviously there's nothing going on, you come over to your the um, like tree, your project explorer, right click the name of the project you just made and go down to the option for add, add new item. And then it's gonna by default, it's probably gonna go to this visual C++ and you want this C++ file, which is a .cpp. If you're using a different IDE, a different programming um, format, just figure out where C++ file is stored. It's gonna be a file that gives you a .cpp um, file extension. And then uh, name it something, uh, typically like main for your first one is a good idea to name it, but um, you can call it whatever you want. And then just hit add, and you'll see down here in the, um, project uh, tree you'll you'll get main.cpp pops in and um, let's go ahead and create just a hello world pro program real quick to get like the console the terminal window to pop up and display uh, hello world because that's really a very simple way to start programming so first thing you want to do is this uh, pound sign include and then in uh, like arrows pointing out uh, greater than less than signs um, do IO stream and this is just what you need to be able to uh, this is what you need to be able to do like console in console out commands and then the first thing you want to do is just define a namespace and so this is um, this is going to be something pretty standard that I'll get into more as we get into more advanced concepts but for now just understand like this is creating a little development world for you to put functions and program uh, programming inside in uh, future programs so uh, we're going to do using namespace std for standard not like us you know std you weirdos Anyways, um, and then we're gonna do this int, which is basically like initialize, and then um, we're gonna create a first function that we're just gonna call main. And so that's gonna look like this, um, int main, and uh, actually, sorry, it's it's not initialize, it's integer, but um, so then this main and then parentheses is uh, creating a function. And then inside your function, you need these curly brackets. So this, if you've programmed in C sharp, this probably looks pretty familiar because um, this is fairly similar. And actually I'll say that right now, like a lot of what you're gonna see in C sharp should kind of be familiar um, to what you're gonna see in C++. So if you're trying, or even if you know C, 
they're all based on C languages. So you're going to notice similarities, but there's a lot of syntax differences as well. C++ is generally considered one of the hardest programming languages to write in. And honestly, even like, um, you know, developers like myself who really only work on personal projects, I kind of steer away from C++. I prefer C sharp. But um, I think this tutorial series could be really helpful and I think it could help me grow as a programmer as well. So if you have any questions or comments about anything you see or even corrections, uh, constructive feedback, let me know in the comments below and we'll make this thing as good as we can together. So um, inside these curly brackets is where we're actually defining the code that's going to run in our main function. Um, and so to get something printed onto the console window, that's pretty easy. Um, you just do this C out, um, which means console out, and then two less than signs. And th these less than signs are kind of like um, separators. I don't know the official term for the, the key, but it's like it can kind of act as an append function. So like when you have a string and you want multiple things to be like on there, you separate them all by these less than signs. And then uh, use quotations and hello world like this. Hello world. And then two more less than signs. And you have to use this when you're printing. You need end L, which is end line. And this is going to give you one row of text on a console application when we pop it up. But very important, um, if you don't want the uh, code to just close as soon as it opens, you need to include this return zero at the very bottom. And so what you're looking at right now is really the most basic uh, function that I can you know, show you guys to get started with C++. Um, and you, depending on the IDE, this might say like uh, build and run or compile and run. Um, on Visual Studio, it says local Windows debugger. But basically, when you run this, it's going to take all of the code you just wrote and convert it into a language your machine understands. And then um, hopefully, I think I can make this a little bigger. So you'll see there, hello world, and it's just um, giving us this default code exited with code zero, and then press any key to close this window. So um, you can just press a key and close the window. But uh, basically, this is going to be like the default where you want to start from in the future. So um, this kind of program is just a nice framework. You can put all your basic code inside of this main routine. Um, and this syntax is kind of what you want to follow a quick note You don't technically have to do the tabs for spacing. I find it's a little easier to organize your code if you do it this way um, But actually that's uh, that's an optional step um, It's not like Python where the number of tabs in UR actually determines how the code runs as long as it's in these curly brackets um, Okay, so that's a hello world program. Let's go ahead and um, talk quickly about how it processes multiple lines of text. So your program, and this should be very familiar to anyone who's programmed in any languages before, but if you're an absolute beginner, don't worry. Um, we'll talk about it real quick. So it's, it is going to execute top to bottom. So in general, if, uh, if, it's, if you're coming down trying to debug and see what's happening, unless a function or a class is called, meaning like something that was written on line two gets called on line 12, and then it jumps back to that point, it's going to execute from top to bottom. So as we enter this main function, it wants to run hello world, and then it's going to run this is line two. So let me go ahead and do this is line one, and then this is line two. And if I run this now, okay, you'll see we get this is line one, and then this is line two. So hopefully that's explaining like the order in which this thing is executing. Um, and so that's just a little piece you want to understand. Like if you try to say like um, you want to use math, but you're using a variable that you define later. So if up here I was like a plus B and this isn't proper format. I'm just trying to explain this. But down here you said like A is three, B is five. Well, this is going to give you an error because and you also need semicolons at the end of every line. But like I said, this isn't an actual thing. Um, this would always throw an error, not just because it's bad syntax, but because you're trying to use variables that haven't been defined yet. So it's not like, oh, well, I defined the variables somewhere in the pro project. Um, it's no, you have to define all of your variables before you use them at all. So um, that's just why I wanted to show this kind of two lines of text to sort of explain the order in which your code is going to execute. 
Um, and I think this is just an easy way to illustrate it. You saw line one prints out before line two. Uh, and I think one last thing I'd like to do in this very introductory video is just quickly talk about um, introducing variables. So if we wanted to print out a line of code that was my name is Pete and then I am doo -doo, I am 25 like that. Uh, we could do this. This is a valid program and it's going to execute. So my name is Pete. I am 25. Okay. It looks fine. It did what we wanted to do, but let's say we want this same code to be able to run and we want to be able to quickly and easily change name and change the um, age. We can introduce what is called variables and these are pretty universal across all programming languages, but um, the format is maybe not what you're used to seeing before. So to introduce a variable, you start by um, instantiating it, calling it, defining it, initializing it, whatever you want to call this. The first time you introduce a variable, you say the variable type. So like a person's name is going to be a string. So string my name, and then you can leave it at that. Or on this same line, you can do equals and then give it an, an initial value. So for me, I'm going to say string my name equals Peter. And then I'll show you what I mean on this next line. I'll say we also want an integer for age. And I'll just say integer my age like that. And I'm going to leave it there. And now what I'm going to say on the next line is my age equals 25. Okay, so this is also a valid way of doing it. Most of the time, if you have a simple variable that you're initializing, you're going to put it all in one rung just like this. Um, but you could do it this way. That's fine. Um, and now to actually use these in our strings, um, let's take a look at how we do that. So here's where using those less than signs um, to concatenate or add multiple things together um, comes in handy. So instead of my name is and then Peter, we're going to say my name is and then less than less than sign and then the variable my name and then end the line. And it's the same thing uh, for the uh, age. But what's kind of nice is you don't have to convert um, my age to a string. It knows that this is just displaying text. And so if you have an issue where like in Python, this would throw an error because you're trying to concatenate an integer with a string and those two different types of data can't just be combined without converting your integer to a string. In C++, it can just use these less than less than signs to display I am and then 25 and then still have the end line. So this should work as long as I didn't put any uh, errors or anything stupid in here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, and we get my name is Peter and I am 25. And that's pretty useful. Um, but you may be saying, well, we only use it in one place. So what's really the value in that? Well, let's say uh, I like the name my name and then next year i will be and uh we'll say you know in this break we're going to redefine my age so we'll say my age equals my age plus one okay we've used this same variable and we've just added one to it but now um we are uh going to use that variable again so now let me get rid of d so now if I run this, you were going to see it's a little story about Peter being named Peter. And I like uh, being, you know, I like being named Peter, but next year I'll be 26. So basically we've used that variable twice now. Well, let's change this to uh, Jack and 28. Okay, so let's do it this way. Just by changing the initial values of this variable, I've changed the entire program. So now it's going to say my name is Jack. I am 28 years old, 28. I like the name Jack. Next year, I'll be 29. So our whole function is still valid just by changing a few variables um, instead of having to come in and change text in four different lines of output. So this is a super, super preliminary introduction to C++, getting started, using the Visual Studio IDE, creating a project, displaying uh, inputs or displaying outputs onto the console window, as well as a few ways to use variables. Um, I believe what I'm going to do on the channel in terms of format is I will probably make Tuesdays a non-Python day, so C++, 
maybe some C sharp. We might eventually get into like uh, Unity and possibly some game engine uh, type stuff. Uh, I want to use Tuesdays for non Python content because I obviously do a lot of Python content and would like to continue. Um, so I will probably keep that on Fridays. If you have any thoughts on the format, on what you'd like to see on the channel or how I could make it better, please leave me a comment. I love seeing constructive feedback and I want to know what I can do to make uh, the tutorials and the experience better for you guys. So thank you very much for watching the channel. Don't forget to leave a like on any video you found useful. Subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot I'm trying to get the channel started here. And uh, if you want to be a super supporter, I will leave a Patreon link in the description below. Any uh, tier of support is really, really appreciated, but absolutely no pressure. I want to keep bringing these tutorials to you guys no matter what. So uh, thank you very much. And until next time, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.